Welcome! Using the Weber Grill Igniter Replacement Kit on the right, we're going to remove the old dysfunctional igniter and replace it with a new one. The instructions in this episode apply to Weber 310 and 320 Genesis Series Grills. Per the Weber Owner's Guide and prior to buying the kit and installing a new igniter, I recommend that you unscrew the igniter button here and change the AA battery. Check the igniter. If the grill still fails to ignite, purchase the Weber Igniter Replacement Kit on the right. By the way, we purchased this Weber grill on sale more than six years ago from Lowe's. Other than this igniter, we have not had any problems. It's been by far the best one we've had. All the other grills we've had over the years have been plagued with rusted out parts and other problems. In fact, I can't remember keeping a non-Weber grill for more than three years. For this effort, you'll need a straight blade screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, and pair of pliers, and one AA cell battery. For the best performance, Weber recommends that you use a lithium AA battery. My wife purchased our Weber Grill Igniter Kit from Amazon Prime. It consists of the following items. An igniter mechanism, three electrodes, four wire guides and washers, and a good set of pictorial instructions for Weber 310, 320, and 330 series grills. In addition, the instructions include two safety warnings which urge you to only use Weber replacement parts and turn your propane tank off. I recommend that you disconnect the tank. Okay, let's go to work and replace the igniter mechanism by going through the first four steps of the instructions at this time. Okay, for step one, we need to remove the grill shroud. And to do that, we go to the rear of the grill here and pull these cotter pins from the, these attachment two clevises. So, and I, I like to keep a parts tray nearby. Uh, with, without one, I'm really good at losing things. And I think most of us probably are. Okay, so we, we have that one out and we'll pull the other one on this side and remove this cotter pin also. Okay, so with that done, let's remove the, the shroud. And, and this thing is fairly heavy, so careful with it. Don't drop it. I'm sure it would it'd break it on a hard surface. So, okay. Okay, the shroud is removed. Next, we'll pull the warming rack off. Remove the left and right grates. And next, remove the, the five flavorizer bars. Okay, next we move, remove the left and right doors. And as, by the way, as you can see, for safety purposes, as I mentioned before, I've already re removed the propane tank. So we'll, we'll remove the left and right doors. And to do this, we use a straight, straight bladed screwdriver and pull this pin attachment down. As you can see, the doors remove very easily. So next, we go under the control panel to the wind deflector and remove these two Phillips screws. Then you just pull it back and down and the wind deflector is off. And this gives us access to our igniter panel or our igniter unit. Okay, next, we'll unscrew the igniter knob, turn it counterclockwise, you can see, and also remove the, the internal battery that was in there before. and remove this plastic nut 
holds it in place. Okay, so you, as you can see, this, this enables us to easily bring this out. You can see that there is some corrosion with inside the, the panel. Once again, I, I mentioned that this is this unit is over six years old and it's been great for us. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and, and install the new one, new igniter, and it will remove its knob and tightening lug the other one over here so we don't get those mixed up and I always think it's a good idea to replace the wires one for one, for one. so as you can see you got a blue connection here green connection here black connection here and yellow here and all of these went into the appropriate colors with the exception of the, uh, the yellow connection goes into like a, an orange receptacle otherwise all the other ones are pretty straightforward and we'll, we'll slip the box notice that the the box goes in like this with the, the flat portion of the threaded surface it's going into here we'll tighten this up this is sort of a nylon plastic but you still don't want to ruin it you do want to get it nice and snug, snug because you don't want to uh, have the thing go loose on you again. And lastly, we need to insert a, a battery in there, a AA battery, which I have over here in my, my box. And in this case, the positive side goes down per the instructions. And we'll screw the igniter knob back on. So that completes the, the changing of the igniter panel. Let's go ahead and uh, install the propane tank again and test it. Okay, so I've got the propane installed again. So let's turn it on. This time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the knob and we'll try burner number one to see if it works. Okay, you can see it came up perfectly. Flame is there. We'll do burner number two. Flame is up perfectly. And burner number three. Flame came up perfectly. So as you can see, the replacement of the, the mechanism worked out fine. And we don't have to go through an extensive disassembly of the rest of the, the unit. And so at this time, we'll merely replace the components that, that we took off. Okay, I, posi I positioned underneath the control panel of the grill and we're gonna reinstall the wind deflector. So, and we're gonna insert our Phillips screws in these, these two areas right here. We'll slip this in here, line these up and we do have it lined, aligned right. And we, we inserted, we also inserted this with the flanges in position here. We'll put this one in hand tightening. there and the second Phillips screw over on this side I 
things are always a little bit more difficult to put back together than take apart, as you, as you probably know. But we're in line there. And we'll tighten this side. Okay, so that includes the installation of the window plug. Next, we'll install our left and right uh, grill doors with our flat bladed uh, screwdriver. And get into position here. I missed the slot on that one. Okay, we're engaged there, and that door's in. And as you can see, the, the hole is right here. So we'll pull this down, pick it up, see it coming up through and we're engaged, so the doors are reinstalled. Okay, I've just installed the five, reinstalled the five flavorizer bars, and we'll do the left and right um, grill tops here. And the warming rack. Lastly, we'll re install the grill, grill shroud. Okay, let's go around the back to see how it's, it's aligned, and we have lined it properly. We'll first insert our clevis pins. That one's in. And our second one, it's in. And our two cotter pins. That one's in. And that cotter pin's in. So that, that completes the job. We've successfully completed the replacement of the igniter. Being an engineer, I'm very interested in, in determining why things have failed. So I think I'll take this, the old igniter, down to my shop and see what I can figure out. And see if I can determine uh, what went wrong and what's not working. This concludes my Weber grill igniter replacement. If any of you are interested in seeing the entire replacement kit installation completed in steps five through 18, which includes significant disassembly and reassembly of the grill, Please contact me and I'll develop a follow-on episode covering this effort. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. With all of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.